Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks, problem of the day. And today's problem is KF in sister in a tree and it is a medium level problem. So the problem statement says that we have been given a tree and it is a, it is a binary tree and we also have been given a starting node. We have to find the kth ancestor of the starting node and if it doesn't exist, we have to return minus 1. So let us see in this example what they are trying to say. So you see that uh, this is the tree that have been given to us. Now this is the starting node and the value of k in this question is 2. So the first ancestor of this particular four is this 2. Right. And the second ancestor is this particular one. So the second ancestor of four node is going to be this particular one. This is what they are trying to say. Similarly, if uh, the tree is like this, right. So in this case, the third ancestor of this particular node will be one, two, and three. So you will see, you will see if the tree is like this, if I create some reverse edges from the child to parent like this. You will see that we no matter from which node we will start, we are always going to follow a unique path to the root node. So this is the root node. Right. So no matter from let's say I start from this node, I am going to follow this particular path to the root node. If I start from this particular node, this will be the unique path to the root node. Right. So for each of those nodes, there exists exactly one unique path that goes to the root node. Right. So now if I already have some path, my question reduces to finding what is the node at a distance k. So this node is at a distance 1, this is at a distance 2, this is at a distance 3 and this is at a distance 4. Right. So the only task now I have is I need to find what is the node which is at a distance k from the current node. So my whole idea, my whole idea is to try maintaining a parent array. Right. Or any data structure which will store what is the parent of my current node. So if I know what is the parent of my current node, I can jump to that particular node and that will be my first ancestor. If I make this jump again, this is going to be my second ancestor. I can keep on doing this until I reach my kth ancestor or, or I reach a state where I reach the null pointer. So let's say this is null pointer at the top. So if the value of k in this case, let's say we start from 4, if the value of k was 3, then we would have gone to 2, then 1. And then we reach the null pointer. So in this case, the answer will not exist. Right. So the key idea is very simple. You just need to maintain a parent array. And at each step, you can move to the parent of the current element. And this is how you find the ancestor. Right. So that was all about this particular problem. Now let us discuss how do we actually form this parent array and how we are we actually going to form our answer. So let's say I am at a current node. Right. So I can check whether current dot left is not equal to null pointer. So if it is not null pointer, what I can do, I can set parent of current left as current because this is going to be the left child of my current node. So the parent of this child will be equal to the current node. I can do the exact same thing for the right node as well. Right. And then I'll have the parent of all the nodes. One more thing that the input is actually given to us in the form of an integer. That means we have not been given the node, we have been given the value of node. So if at any node, if at any node your current data is equal to the given input node, right, in that case you can set your start node as current node. This is something you will have to do manually. Now at the end what you can do, you will maintain a while loop. So in this while loop you can do k minus minus because you have to run this loop k times, right. And you can also set your condition as while current node is not equal to null pointer because if it is if it becomes null pointer that means my answer does not exist at each step i'll do nothing i'll just update my current node as parent of current node. right so if you do this part then you'll be able to solve this particular problem now let us directly have a look at the code and you'll be able to understand this very easily so i've created an unordered map of parent right so this is going to store a mapping of node to node. I have also created a start node. Now what I do, this is my traverse function. First of all, I will set my parent of root as null pointer and I am going to call this traverse function. 
So if my current data is equal to the node that I want to start from, then I'll update my start as current. If my left is not equal to null pointer, I'll update my parent of current dot left is equal to current. That means I'm setting the parent of my left child equal to the current current node. And I call the traverse function on the left child. I do the exact same thing for the right child as well. And at the end, what I'll do, I'll, I'll start my answer node as with a start node, right? And I'll perform this operation k times. That is why I can use k minus minus here. So the, both of these conditions should be satisfied together. That answer should not be equal to null pointer. So if you're wondering what this is, so you will see like this post decrement will decrement k each time. And as soon as it becomes zero, right? This condition will itself become false because in C++ zero is treated as false. So when this condition becomes false, right? This will terminate the loop. Similarly, when answer becomes null pointer, this will also terminate the loop. Now at each step, I don't have to do anything. I just have to set answer is equal to parent of answer. Now at the end, if answer is not equal to null pointer, I can return answer data. Otherwise I can return minus one. So let me just submit this code and show you that this particular code works and this approach is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and you'll be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.